Why are you trying to change your relationships? Number one, we have unhappiness. When you can't seem to be happy with your partner or yourself, you begin searching for what needs to change in your relationship externally rather than looking inward. And every option that partner could choose or make feels like the wrong option for example let's say you're in a relationship with a guy and you want him to open up more you want to get him to be someone who's like an open book that will tell you all his secrets he'll he'll come out of his shell he'll let you know how his day was he'll let you know how he felt yesterday he'll let you know how angry or upset he was that his poop came out a little bit harder than it did the day before and he does try and open up with you you find yourself still unhappy At the aspect that even though now he might be opening up to you, now you don't feel like you got a chance to really talk about yourself or you don't like what he says. And you find yourself in a place where anything someone does makes you unhappy or unsatisfied or unfulfilled. And so what what happens then? You constantly are trying to say, okay, I'm still unhappy. So let's change this because that's the thing that about you because that's the thing that's going to make me happy in this relationship. Uh, you changed it, but I don't really like it. Let's change this. That's the thing that's going to make me happy and fulfilled in this relationship. Oh, actually you changed it, but I thought it would help, but it didn't really help the way I thought it would help. Let's change this instead. And so you're running around like a dog chasing after its tail, trying to change your relationship and change your partner into something that you feel, okay, this one thing that I change about them is the thing that's going to make this relationship work. And in reality, it never does. One Because people only change when they want to change, not because you force them to change. And two, people are who they are when you met them. If you are unhappy with the person you're in a relationship with, there is no amount of energy you can put towards trying to change them that is going to bring you happiness or fulfillment. I have your happiness unhappy slash unfulfilled because they're kind of interchangeable and they're one and the same because it's the same idea no matter what your partner could do when you're in the mindset where you're trying to change the relationship to see something differently because you want something different in the relationship. There is no amount of change that ever actually makes you satisfied when you're truly unhappy or when you're truly unfulfilled. And so I know a lot of you guys are going to be like, well, how do I get happy in my relationship? How do I get happy in my relationship? Well, you have to understand the job of being happy in your relationship starts with identifying what your happiness in the relationship even is, which means identifying what you need from a man or a woman, meaning the way you want them to treat you, the way you need the dynamic to be, understanding your own personality and character traits and what works best with that. Obviously, those are things that you learn over time, right? But you build together this list or the wish list, as I call it, of the things that you need and require for a relationship. And the reason that wish list is so important and it becomes like your Bible is because when you go out into the real world, when you go out on your dates, when you go out and you meet these people, you need to have something to refer back to as to, okay, this is what I'm looking for. So let me take the rest of this time to learn and understand you so that I can identify if you are fitting the criteria of what I am looking for. Because you don't want to find yourself in a place where now you're established in this relationship and now you're trying to change the person into someone that they are not and they have never been. Because you'll continue to feel unhappy and unfulfilled and even unsatisfied as you continuously try to put your energy into changing someone rather than doing the job at the beginning of learning and understanding them. That doesn't mean you have to accept crumbs. That doesn't mean you have to accept the less than you think you deserve. But what you should be doing is paying attention to those character traits, those qualities, how someone carries themselves, how they talk to you, how they act, how they react, how they respond. All of that stuff you should be paying careful attention to at the beginning so you don't find yourself in a long term relationship where you're sitting back and saying, all right, I don't like how any of this is working or going. And I'm going to do my best to make it change into the way that I want it to, even though I know that that person is most likely not willing to change anything about them. Number two, you can't accept them for who they 
really are. Your perfect idea of who they are is fading because you can no longer project onto them the personality that you want them to be. And over time, in getting to know them, you must accept that they are not exactly what you imagine them in your head. But that's very difficult to accept. In fact, for some of you and for some of us, it's impossible to accept that someone isn't exactly how I envision them in my mind. And they're not the Prince Charming that I read about in my smut book. They're not the Prince Charming that I read about in my Wattpad story. They're not the Prince Charming that I watched in my Disney princess movies. And so you begin trying to force your partner to be more like the guy you were imagining. But then what happens is you end up overlooking their actual personality traits you're so excited that oh my god i met you and you're so amazing and this is going to be my love story and you're going to sweep me off my feet and i'm going to be like cinderella and you're going to find my glass slipper you're going to put it on my feet and we're going to get married and this is going to be so 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 amazing like i'm going to have such a great life and there's nothing wrong with wanting that and having that you can have that but what ends up happening is your focus is so much on that that you instead of you analyzing are you prince charming you say, no, you are Prince Charming. I'm just going to focus on trying to make you my Prince Charming because I want you to be my Prince Charming. Do you see the difference, right? You can still have your Prince Charming, but that doesn't mean that the first guy that comes across you and goes on a date with you and tells you he likes you is your Prince Charming. And in the process of you wanting them to be the one so bad, you don't do what's more important, which is for you to sit back, relax, and do your best to learn and understand that person. And in the process of that, you need to accept whatever it is they choose to show you as the truth. Because when you can't accept them for who they really are, you'll find yourself in a position where you're constantly trying to change them to fit the mold of who you imagined them or projected them to be. I own a restaurant and I want to hire a chef. I go out and I say, you know what? I don't feel like going through all the work of check, making sure that whoever I, I bring in checks off all these different boxes, knows this cuisine, knows that because that's too much work. I'm just going to bring someone in off the street that's looking for a job and I'm going to figure out how to make them a chef. So then what happens? I pick someone off the street and I tell them, hey, OK, I needed a chef. You said you were looking for a job. OK, come work for me in this kitchen and cook some food. And they're like, oh, but I have, you know, like a like a nose issue where I can't really smell stuff. And, you know, I get sick a lot. So sometimes I can't even taste stuff. I really don't even know what I'm doing in a kitchen. No, no, no. Don't worry. You're going to be the chef. I was looking for someone to cook. We're going to teach you how to be a chef. And so what ends up happening? I spend a lot more time and energy trying to teach that person how to be a chef, even if they were never equipped to be a chef, to know what they're doing in the kitchen. And so I waste a lot of time and energy when I should have just taken the time beforehand to figure out what type of chef I need, what type of restaurant I'm opening, where it's going to be located, what are the potential people I can find, where can I find them, where should I post the job, what are the most likely or, or the perfect candidates going to be like. And then by the time I, even though it takes more energy at the beginning and there's more of a vetting process and I have to do a whole bunch of interviews and I have to say no to some people and I have to go over here and maybe get someone from over here or maybe talk to this person, talk to that person, even though it takes more initial energy to get my final chef at the end of the day, when I have the chef working in the kitchen, I am happy because I don't have to unteach them things. I don't have to reteach them things. I don't have to maneuver around the things that don't work for me or that I don't like the way he cooks food or how he burns the pasta or how he whatever he does. I can just enjoy the fact that I hired the right person for the job. And for the rest of my life, I get to sit back and be a happy restaurant owner. And I never have to hire a new chef ever again because I'm already happy with the person that I hired. It's the same thing for you and your relationships. You can't start backwards. Oh, I meet you, I like you. Okay, let's get, to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get into this relationship. I won't worry about the specifics of whether or not you fit the criteria of the person I'm looking for. We'll figure it out as we go. And then you realize there's a lot of stuff that doesn't work for you 
in this relationship. So now you're trying to you're trying to teach someone who was never a chef and never intended to be a chef in the first place. You're trying to teach them how to cook. You're trying to take them to culinary school. You're trying to do all this extra work and you still end up unhappy because they were never who you were actually seeking in the first place. You just wanted so badly for them to be the person working in that position that you just were constantly trying to force that force them into that hole. Then number 3 is you are looking for more. You feel that this person is the best you can do at the time, yet you don't feel they are truly enough for you. Your constant search for better makes you want to change them into your idea of better. That hopefully they will be more like the partner you actually want because none of us want to admit that the person that we're with is not what we feel like our destination is and so we're looking for more whether it be consciously or subconsciously so what do we do when we're looking for more we try to turn that person that we're with into more okay i'll give you guys an example you've always wanted someone as romantic as you let's imagine you want you want a ro romantic man super romantic. We'll do all the stuff that you see people doing on uh, these YouTube couples and these TikTok couples. You want a man that's as romantic as that. You want your Romeo and Juliet story. Let's imagine that. But your partner expresses love in a very subtle and different way from what you've been imagining. You want more romanticism. So you constantly push him to be more romantic and both of you end up frustrated. Instead, at the beginning, you should have let him show you if he is the romantic type of guy you were always looking for. And so when I say looking for more, I know some of you guys think, oh, like better looking, more attractive, more money, more richer. Yes, I'm talking about that. But what I'm also talking about is more in terms of whatever it is that you need. So it could just be, I want more romanticism in my relationship. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But then when you find yourself in a relationship where there's a lot less romanticism or the romanticism isn't what you envisioned or wanted, that's on you to understand. I know I need this in a relationship. So when I meet these people and I get into these relationships, I need to identify, is this the romantic type of vibe, chemistry, you know, dynamic that I always envisioned? Because if it's not, what's going to happen is I'm always going to be with that person, always thinking about how I can get more out of them, more romanticism out of them, when for the most part, that's not who they are. That's not their personality. Or even if they are a romantic person, they don't show it in the way that I want them to show it. And so what ends up happening, I try to make them more romantic, like how I want them to be. I'm frustrated because it's not working for me. I don't feel the romance in the way I want. They're frustrated because when they do feel that they're showing the, ro the romance in the way that they feel works for them, you don't receive it. You don't appreciate it. And so both parties are frustrated and both parties are trying to make the relationship more of whatever it's not. Number four, you are trying to stop yourself from hurting. You're in so much pain because of how he treated you or her treated you that you try to change them as a way to heal and stop hurting. It's so misguided because the energy shouldn't be put into trying to change them so you don't feel the pain anymore. The energy should be put into identifying why and how they make you feel pain and then realizing that you need to let go of that relationship in order to stop feeling that pain. It's not continue being in the relationship and force them to change because a lot of times for most of us, if we're in a relationship where we feel so much pain that it's unbearable and we need someone to change, the they're they're usually not <laughs> in the mindset or the mind state to make any changes. They usually have no intention of changing, which is why the disrespect or the relationship has gone to the point where you feel absolutely mistreated. But they don't really have any intention of changing. And I told you guys before, right from the beginning, the only time someone will ever change is when they have the intention to change, not because you force them to change, not because you beg them to change. Instead, 
of only accepting better men into your life. I know I talk so much about, you know, girls and then, you know, the guys, but I know that some guys eventually listen to me. It's the same thing applies, right? You accept what is lesser than or what works for now because you're lonely. Oh, you see, it all comes back to the same places because you're lonely or you need validation or you need that attention. You want to feel loved by someone else when you should be giving yourself love. And because you need that because you're desperate for that. You accept less than your better man. And then you try to turn the lesser man that you accepted just because you wanted attention and love and validation. You try to turn him into the better man when you should have been holding out and waiting for the better man all along and not wasting your time or energy on the lesser man. Because at the very beginning, you're not as invested in him. But you say, oh, I do need attention. I do need love. I do need validation. So what do you do? You let the lesser man come into your life and you're like, okay, show me something. Maybe you can make all this attention and love you give me. Maybe you can become the better man. And then you realize after a while, he's never going to be the better man. But now you're like, I'm stuck now. So what am I going to, I got to change you into the better man. And so you're frustrated and he's frustrated and everyone's frustrated. Uh, let's say you're in a relationship with the guy who cheated on you. So now you try to turn him into an open book who will show you everything, tell you everything, show you every message, send you all of his passwords, let you log into his snap, his IG, see his DMs. In the end, he only ends up continuing to be the same person you met at the beginning and probably cheats on you again. That pain, you want so badly to get rid of that, but rather than just walking away, you're so invested, you don't wanna walk away from it because you're like, oh, but I've spent so much time in this relationship, how can I walk away now? You instead try to change that man into something he truly never wants to or intended to change, right? Because there's a difference between your man cheating on you and saying, okay, have the passwords to my stuff. Okay, I wanna make this better. I want you to feel good. I'm gonna call you this day. I'm gonna call you that. I'm gonna do everything I can to make this situation better. There's a difference between that and you finding out that he cheats on you and then you giving him all his rules and regulations on things he's gotta change about himself so that this relationship can work. And that's never what he wanted to do or intended to do. Because what happens after that is he's just gonna hide from you whatever he's doing and continue being the person that he's always been. Meanwhile, you're over here trying to force a square peg into a round hole or is it a round hole into a square peg i don't know one of the two and number five you are in denial don't try to take someone who's always been something and then now that you're with them you expect them to change into something that they've never been don't meet a guy in the club and then expect him to never go to the club again because you guys are in a relationship or you're trying to turn him into a man who stays inside and cooks with you every uh, afternoon or every weekend when that's not how you met him. The people who are serial date appers, always on the dating apps, always, you know what I mean, talking to people on the dating apps, those are the people that find it the hardest to delete or get rid of the dating apps when they finally start talking to someone. But then if you think about it, what do you expect? When you met them, they were heavy on the dating app. When you met them, that's how they were talking to most of their people. That's how they got to know you. And so now you're expecting that, oh, we're, we're together now or we met now. So I expect that you'll never open a dating app ever again. But that's why I always advise you guys to get away from dating apps and meet people, places that you think are appropriate and you would like to see them in many more times. If you can meet someone in a place that you guys share some sort of passion or doing something that you're both passionate about, well, then you never have to worry about what that person is about because they're about the same thing that you're about and it works for your relationship. But when you meet a guy in a bar or a club and you know you don't want a guy who goes out to the bar and the club every weekend, well, then what are you doing? You're inviting someone into your life. Remember how I gave you guys the example of trying to hire a chef for my restaurant and I put, take someone off the street and I try to turn them into a chef and I'm angry when they're not a good cook. Don't meet a guy at a bar. You're looking for a chef. You bring him into your kitchen and then you're angry that he can't cook. You're angry that the guy you met at the bar wants to go out on the weekends and now you're trying to change him into something that he's not. Because how you meet people is who they are. And I'm not saying that good guys never go to the club. I'm just saying that to give you an understanding of the concept, right? Accept people for who they are. Don't be looking to meet people and then figure out how you can change them into what you want them to be. Figure out how you can find the person that you were looking for all along. 